Hi everyone and welcome to Berkeley Bicycle Club and welcome to season four of On the Couch. Yay! Season four. I can't believe it. Um, so if you're if you're a regular viewer, then you see that we are making some changes to locations and to sets. We're gonna try to film more regularly in front of an audience. Just a few things we're trying to make, keep it fresh, keep it exciting, and keep you hopefully watching us. Uh, we've got back with us today our lovely reporters, Kat Grant, and our awesome reporter, Boyd Kodak. And we've got uh, a new part, a member to the family, the cutie back there who you're going to meet soon, Ade Johnson, who's going to be doing a segment we're going to be calling The Youth Corner. Um, and um, our show broadcasts on a couple of platforms, a couple of medias. Um, but mainly it highlights um, artists and creative talent in the LGBT community in the greater Toronto and surrounding area. Hopefully though, wherever you're watching it, um, you find something relatable to our LGBTQ experience and human experience that we all share. Um, and we have a theme this year. The theme is going to be creative heroes then and now. It's just what the name says. We're going to be talking to amazing um, uh, artists and talents and we're going to be looking at some awesome history as well and some history that's being made right now. My personal hero, my guest today is none other than a pioneer lesbian comedian, uh, seasoned uh, We're Funny That Way, sure. Just For Laughs and other festivals, the one and only, the funny Elvira Kurt, everyone. <laughs> I've been, I've been trying to have you on my couch uh, nice. since the start. Oh, that doesn't we'll sound see, right. Oh, right. since the start. No, I'm certainly not now. But yeah, our schedule didn't work out, and now you're right. finally here. I am finally here, but I'm, I'm, so I don't qualify for the youth corner. We're on the old couch. <laughs> we're on the couch. This is for the old people, us. Yes. <laughs> Um, so, yes. oh, we're going to talk a little bit about work. Let's All start right, with sure, that. Sure, yes, so I, I like talking about work. Um, recently, you've done uh, a game show. I did I do only a game read that on, on, on Wikipedia. Sure. <laughs> but you I'm not sure what the show is. So you didn't see it? No, I never watched it. No. It was in the West End or something, no? Oh, it, was, it was on uh, CHCH or Channel Zero, all <laughs> harbingers of a giant hit. Uh, but it was a uh, shot. We went out to Hamilton to do it. And it what was. What kind uh, of show? What it, it was called Spin Off. It was a game show by Mark Burnett, the guy who does Survivor, yeah. one of the, one of the um, people that make the challenges on those, on the Survivor shows, uh -huh. came up with this idea for a game show. And they wanted to do it up here in Canada. And okay. What was the game? Production what company. Was it was called Spin Off. It was great. It, was, it, missed, it mixed uh, trivia. Oh. And luck, and what they needed yeah, like was a host who could, um, who could banter while a contestant was thinking, and that <laughs> proved to be harder Not than like they that. thought. So they moved through everybody that they wanted to so you're use. Trying to distract them, and then they uh, they landed on me. Okay. So uh, yeah. I was I was happy to do like it. it was but fun. you're it was no longer doing. No, no, I mean we did so. uh, we, like we did a whole season, uh -huh. and uh, and. By every measure, it was a Canadian hit, and so oh. you never saw it again. Oh. Huh? <laughs> That's what happens to Canadian hits. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very often. Um, of course, you've done a lot of great things over your career. I've done, I've done You've everything. done shows, documentaries, films, but there's a show that I remember that I loved, yeah. and uh, I was disappointed when it stopped airing, and that is Pop Culture with That's Elvira right. Kurt. Oh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, for for audience who may not know or watch the show, what was it? Sure, what that would be a, by almost a generation now. <laughs> the youth corner has no lot. idea. There you go. They need to know now. Happening. What have we done before? Um, yeah, it was uh, it was like a, a daily show for pop culture back in the day, and it was on the Comedy Network when uh, when they were interested in in Canadian content. Now the the it's scene has changed, yeah. and it's just a lot easier to buy. Uh, American shows and oh. the CRTC rules and regulations have changed, and so that I don't think that that show would would happen oh. anymore. Oh. And also, it just happened to coincide. So much luck and stars aligning, you know, and you're at the mercy of gatekeepers. And so, you know, the, none of it's personal. It's just the way it is. The, there was an opportunity for this show to happen, and then just as quickly, 
they, you know, all the money that they were investing in the show, they wanted to, they were starting up MTV in Canada, and uh -huh. they wanted to put all the money oh, in it that. Was, it so was light, was, it was uh, cheery. I, it was I fun, like it was great, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we are going to take uh, a break, uh, but we're going to join reporter uh, Kat Grant and her guest, Joanne Venicola. <laughs> Hi everyone, Kat Grant here. My guest today is Emmy Award winning actor, Joanne Vanicola. Um, the first question I have for you is you've had a very illustrious career, but you haven't sat on your laurels. What you have been doing is activism. Would you tell everyone what you're doing and why it's important? Um, actually, part of what I've been doing recently is, um, is trying to get active around the union, around LGBTQ. Uh, voices in terms of storytelling and performance and film and television so I'm running for council just so that I can make that a priority in terms of Canadian content and I'm trying to create uh, sort of a new council new committee that looks at uh, how we bring in funds and who gets those funds and how we can expand that for LGBTQ performers so that's something I want to do now although historically I've done a lot of activism around uh, women's rights, uh, children's rights, uh, LGBTQ um, issues prior to gay marriage. I was very active in the movement, so. Right, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, your writing project that you have coming up? Yeah, I have a, a couple of things that I've been working on. Uh, I did a short film recently that um, just finished editing called Snip, and uh, I'm working on an LGBTQ pilot uh, about uh, a blended family, um, a, a gay and black family, and. Uh, things that are happening right now culturally uh, in, the, in, in the day that we're living in and how we deal with brutality and, and how we deal with homophobia inside families. Um, so I've been trying to peddle that. But my big baby is, is my memoir that, uh, that I've just finished writing. And um, uh, so I've been yeah, finishing that and working on that. And uh, hopefully it will be in the stores in the next year. So that's, uh, that's the goal. And if we want to see you perform, I believe you have something oh, coming up. I do. There's a show starting October 17th on Netflix. It's uh, called Slasher Guilty Party, and it's pretty out there, a little bit scary and a thriller. And uh, next week, so if anybody's a fan of those shows, uh, clue in. So, um, yeah, I, it's, it's exciting, actually. It's a pretty fun show to be part of, so... Yeah. Um, you played a sheriff on that show, and we were talking earlier this year about um, how you feel it's important to dress in a certain way as a lesbian performer. Mm -hmm. um, is this part of your women in the media and how we're represented? Uh, that's part of it. I think um, I've always been an out lesbian actor, and um, I've never tried to pass. I've never tried to pretend I was heterosexual. And I think because uh, programs are dominated by um, male white heterosexuals for the most part and um, heterosexual women most of the time that we really don't have enough stories about who we are and we certainly don't really see soft butches or you know women with short hair or you know that's that's not been something that the industry has applauded and kind of wanted to shy away from but I've always been really bold <laughs> and stepped forward and, and, and didn't change who I was and I think the culture is slowly starting to catch up in a way and so I think now is a good time to kind of keep promoting that and to speak about that and to educate people about that and to create content about diversity, uh, not just for uh, lesbians, but for people of different races and cultures and genders. And, you know, I think there's a, a broad spectrum of, of, of people that we have yet to uh, expose real stories about uh, in terms of film and television. So that's a, an important thing to me. Thank you again for coming today. We'll be looking out for you and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We've got the lovely Elvira Kirk, who's still chatting here. And uh, we are going to talk about history. Uh, we're looking at heroes this year. With okay. heroes comes history. Um, for those who, who of us who lived it, sure. this is a good time to remember it. Uh, yeah. And for the youth of today, this is a time to let them know what we've done before. So pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> um, Let's talk about the scene back when, yeah, when you were starting. Yeah, let's talk about the scene. Um, okay. the scene on let's start, start with the comedy scene and the scene in the city, maybe. Let's start with those Do two. you mean 
the, the scene, like just comedy, uh, separate from yeah, yeah. the gay what was scene this? at the yeah. time? Because I, they, did not, they did not intersect for a long time. They when didn't. I started that's a good, that's okay. stand-up, I was closeted. Okay. Um, and, I, and it was just, like, I didn't think about it. I was just closeted in my life. I think I just came up at a time when internalized homophobia was just... How See, you, I, how I, I actually did not know that. My first introduction to you was probably you talking about being out. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 So when I started stand up, I, I, I just did, never talked about my life. I, in fact, I pretended to be straight. Straight. And then I, okay. I even had, you know, there was a distinct before and after moment. And so yeah, the when scene did that change? Went, well, yeah. If you want to know about the, the comedy scene, there was really one game in town. It was Yuck Yucks. It was in Yorkville. Okay. And I started at, at what, what would now be called, you know, the golden age of stand-up. It okay. was just starting to be the thing that it was just easy to do in any bar, anywhere across. Like, you, there, I was working when I first started every night of the week. And, you oh, know, I was in right. my 20s. And... It was great that you could just go up on stage. You know, if you could get five minutes together, you could already start going out on the road with, with guys. And oh. then you worked in, you know, the, every place, every kind of a bar wanted comedy because it was so easy. A light stage, boom, you have a show. And then yeah. <laughs> you, you could put it on even easy before. Easy production. Yeah, you yeah. could put it on even before, yeah. what, you know, the strippers came out. Yeah. Like, it was easy. Okay. So, you know, that, it, it was a fun thing to do. I mean, it was a great life. But the price was that you know my material was limited by my the reality of of not being honest about myself uh -huh. yeah. so that changed when I got invited to do a show uh, for the funny gay males they were coming into town playing at University of Toronto it was uh, a giant venue like probably a thousand people and um, and it was these three guys uh -huh. who were openly gay as Funny Gay Mouse, uh -huh. and it was the first time I came, came out, out on in, stage. In, oh. in my material. I don't even remember what I did, but I, I just, I started my act, and I think they knew, and uh -huh. I knew, so it was, it was a safe space without, you know, those words, safe space, safer space, those words didn't exist. It was just, it felt comfortable. It felt like time, and when, then there was when no was going that? back. When was that? Time. Wise. I want to say the 80s, 80s Antoine, and then, and then the, everything else is just a haze of... <laughs> <laughs> and from then we the started performing and... Living. And well, then it was no going back. But, you know, when no. it came out in my, in my comedy act, I couldn't go back to Yuck Yucks to a straight crowd and okay. not be out. It just, it, it changed everything. It just, awesome. I, I changed how I stood. I changed my delivery, my presence. Like, it just, I just became... As we all discover, the difference between closet was and authentic. Out. Yeah, it was authentic. I mean, there was no going back. I yeah. didn't want to. And then it became this really interesting experience of starting my show the way I always did, getting people on side with comedy, just comedy. Yeah. And then halfway through the show. That's when you, you say I it. Would, yeah. Yeah, I, that's what I remember. That's actually the comedy that I remember. Is, right? was, I think first time I saw you, it's like, okay, is she, is she not? It's so funny. And then suddenly, it, yes, she's it, not his. It, just, <laughs> it wasn't, and you know, it, it would make it seem like, oh, it's so, that was so smart of you. But I don't recall really thinking about it. So it just uh -huh. felt like um, uh, a way to ensure my safety. Okay. So I think it was... Get them laughing first. Yeah, like it was... It was it was life-saving, but comedy for me was life-saving to begin with. It was a way to escape my upbringing. It was a way to feel like I belonged somewhere. It was uh -huh. a way to take up space. So it saved my life, comedy. And then coming out the way I did was, as I look back, it would seem like it was really smart, but the truth is I didn't think about it. I just I knew that I wanted to get them on my side, and then I was going to blow their minds. <laughs> and then the only thing that was different after they knew was them. So yeah. it made... And they continued it, laughing. You know, I well, remember... It was, just, remember, it was yeah. their responsibility. It was on them suddenly. I think the first time I saw you was I could, just, on la just, just, just for laughs. Just and for that's, laughs, yeah. 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 But, and so it became what I did for many years. I would, there would be that moment where, you know, 
I had to point out to them that, you know, a minute ago, we were you were, you were with me. <laughs> the only thing that's different now is you, because I'm the same. So it's, cool. it's on you. And so they would, but I, was, I had to help them. So we're going to take a little break, and we're going to check with Boyd Kodak and his guest, Alec Butler, and see what they got to say. Yay! Oh, my God! <laughs> Hi, I'm Boyd Kodak. I'm here today with two-spirit, intersex, genderqueer artist and activist, Alec Butler. Alec has been a champion of queer rights, both pre- and post-transition since 1982. Alex, tell us a little bit about your work from 1982. So let's start with that. Well, I started writing plays in 1982. I wrote my first play in university and it was an award-winning winning play. And then I wrote another Fantastic. play the next year, won an award again, this is back east. And then everybody was like, go to Toronto, go to Toronto. So I came to Toronto in 83, and I got involved with the theater scene here, and I ended up uh, producing and writing a play called Black Friday, which is a play about a lesbian going home with her black lesbian lover back yes. to Cape Breton to come out. Wow. It's kind of a dramedy, a comedy and a dramedy mixed together. Anyway, it was got well received and was nominated for the Governor General's Award. Fantastic. And, um, and when was this? 1991. Amazing. Then it was published, and and then I went on to write another play called Medusa Rising in the mid 90s, which was about um, activists coming together to have a festival for the dead. Wow. It was kind of involved with uh, the AIDS crisis and kind of uh, um, healing from that and creating community out of that. And it was nominated for, for some Dora Awards, the Dora Mayor Award, Maver Moore Awards in 896. Amazing, phenomenal, really. <laughs> and then I um, decided to transition from, uh, um, well, I was born intersex. Born intersex yes. So I was actually born queer, basically. Yeah. So but I didn't you were really... You were I didn't, living female? Yeah, I was living in the female lesbian butch dyke mm -hmm. uh, world and then I came out as trans and changed my name to Alec and also found out I was actually intersex. Okay. And when was this? In the late 90s. Mm -hmm. And then I got involved with film and I made three animated films called Misadventures of Pussy Boy. Yes, I remember them well. Especially <laughs> the first one. Yeah. <laughs> and um, they were really well received. I ended up traveling around the world with them. I went to Berlin, had them screen there. And then I st decided to write a book. <laughs> I want to do it all. Yeah, as you say, you know, <laughs> do you think you could pick up the pace a little, do a little more, yeah? And uh, the book is right here, uh, Rough Paradise. It's my book about um, growing up intersex in the um, 70s. And the trouble, you know, troubles the character, main character gets into with their family, their community. Thank you, Alec. Thank you for being with us today, and thank you for all the amazing work you've done for our community over the years, over the decades. And we'll be right back. So welcome to Youth Corner. I am Adi Johnson, and I'm here today with Alex Watson Rowe, blogger, community activist, and a lot of things that you do. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. So um, tell us about your ballroom involvement here in Toronto. Like, what got you into that? Well, the ballroom scene is very, has been growing and growing inclusive um, since the last two years that I have joined. I really joined because I wanted a place of community or a sense of community and I love dancing and I don't know how to dance but I joined because I wanted to learn how to dance and I realized that it was a great avenue to do that and meet new people and at the same time develop my charisma and my self-awareness and get to know the people in my community that I'm serving. So you're also a part of the board of Black Cap, and you're a blogger. So tell us what you blog about, and where can we find your blog? You can find my blog at wordpress.com backslash tabs attractor factor. The blog is called The Attractor. And ironically, I 
joined the board of Black Cap because of my work on my blog. My blog is uh, HIV focused, or that's how it started. Then it developed into an LGBT lifestyle blog. Um, so you can find anything there from self-care information to information about the latest statistics on, on PrEP. So I write on a whole scale of information um, that's useful for, originally I wrote it for persons of youth, but I still get fans who are in their 60s who are sending messages asking me, Alex, what's an insertive condom? So everything is there, everything. Good. Um, so the government here in Ontario, PrEP is now funded by the government. What do you think about that? And uh, PrEP is funded by the government? PrEP is funded by the government. That's news to me. Because up until four months ago, um, in a, especially in the article that I wrote, I was advocating for the government to step up and, and be a part of um, including that as a part of um, the, the national or the provincial um, okay. healthcare system. And to the best of my knowledge, it wasn't at the time. Or the healthcare system doesn't even cover pharmaceuticals at all. Um, so. so it is funded just since this September. It is now covered, um, I think, up to 80% by OHIP, and then your private health care plan can cover the additional 20%. So I also think it's a great thing. And yes, yeah. yeah, that is fantastic news. I leave the country for two weeks and come back, and amazing things happen. That's good. I should even <laughs> come back more often. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today and for being a part of the community. Thank you again. And we'll head over back to Antoine. All right, everyone, we're back. And we are still chatting here with Elvira Kurt. She's still <laughs> here. She it never left. She hasn't left yet. <laughs> Uh, we can talk about family okay. now. All right, I love it. Um, we can't talk about your family without talking about one of your most fav famous shticks. Sure. Your uh, your Hungarian Jewish mother. <laughs> right. Uh, what? Let's actually let's give them a little taste. What was what was the shtick about? I don't you, know. <laughs> that's the that's the voice. <laughs> I don't know. Who was funny in your family? <laughs> Nobody funny in mine. Uh, okay. What what did she hate it? <laughs> Did she, did she hate my impression? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. She, uh, there was one time she came to a show and I was doing my impression. <laughs> or I was telling a story, probably verbatim, because that's the great thing about my mom, uh -huh. that I could just write down what she was saying. And she said, I never said that. <laughs> she said exactly like that. And she always, she'd always often say, I don't talk like that. <laughs> I gotta she's meet lived, her mama. Oh, she's lived her in, an entire adult life in, in Canada, and she sounds like she got here yesterday. <laughs> so, um, um, were you the class clown growing up? Um, I wouldn't say the, the class clown, but I did volunteer to be in assemblies in okay. school. And so you're active? Yeah, but, and, and I would be imitating is what you did it, back in the day. You, okay. You'd watch Saturday Night Live, and then you'd go <laughs> up and you'd do one of the characters. Like you'd, it wasn't necessarily writing new stuff, but it was recreating, maybe putting my own the popular flair. stuff. Yeah, Gilda yeah. Radner was okay. my hero back then. Uh, when did you come out to family? Uh, I, in my mid twenties, I was probably already already performing uh, openly, and and it felt like I, I I needed to tell my parents. It did not go well. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, but that also everything that has happened with my parents, I just put it back into the, into the show. Oh, well. um, we usually wrap up the show with some quick questions. Sure. Uh, I haven't even written this, so I'm just going to Okay. Um, your question. favorite cuisine? Sushi. Do you have a tattoos? I do. Okay, do you have any piercings? I don't want to know where, but... Well, yes, I do. You do? All right. You don't uh, want to know? Why no. Would you okay, want where? To <laughs> where? <laughs> you want to show us? Later. I don't think we have enough time. <laughs> Uh, your favorite flower? A favorite flower? Yeah. Uh, Freesia. All right. Um, let's, uh, <laughs> uh, community. Uh, this, yes. is, this is not one of the uh, uh, quick questions. What have we done good so far in our community? What can we do better moving forward? What? Wow. Um, <laughs> I know. You want a short Put answer for spot, that. Yeah. Um, 
Well, it's interesting that you ask about community because I, I feel like it's something that I, I, I did not um, value as much when I was younger. I, I didn't come out politically. I came out personally. Okay. And so I'm, even though w in my time, I remember the, the bathhouse raids, but I, I was very, my homophobia, internalized homophobia was, was such that I felt like it wasn't my community. I didn't belong to it. And I, I look back at, at that time and it was a missed opportunity. So that. I think that um, uh, education, like learning, I think that uh, to... History. I, supp I suppose, yeah. but history is, is misremembered. Okay. I don't trust it that much. Okay. I think it's looking forward to the, the next generation and how they're reimagining Absolutely. community and what, what we can do to be better allies in every way. And there's so many reparations that need to be made. Like even within our community, it's just turn around and, and, and pick a group and find out how you can be a better ally and wow. what you can do to use your privilege and entitlement to make sure that it's, it, it really is. If it's not all of us, then it really is. Yes. Yes. That's and, awesome. Elvira. Yes. It's been a pleasure. I, I love Thank, Thank you, you for, for being me. here. I appreciate it. All right. What took All you right. so long? Season four. <laughs> no, I, 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 I do want oh, to say again, you. I asked Season you. Four. <laughs> uh, but hey, you're here. And, I am. and we had Thank a great you for time. Having me. Thank you, everyone. This is it. This is episode one of season four. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Loved it. And <laughs> thank you to again. <laughs> and more awesomeness to come. More so awesomeness. keep watching. We love you guys. Take care. <laughs> See you soon. Yay! <laughs>